the main discussion is this while adoptive parents are asked to do some training take courses to become parents some biological parents have no idea how to parent right and they hurt their children intentionally or unintentionally hello humans of the world this is marina we start up human channel and today we will talk about do parents need a license to practice their parenthood but also other things because it's mainly about catching up um, thank you so much uh, for following my channel for a long time even though I have not been doing videos lately uh, very sporadically and uh, I just want to tell you why those of you who actually met me in person right maybe people from uh, Barcelona meetup, uh, philosophy meetup, or uh, if you met me here in Los Angeles or in, um, uh, in London, you know that um, I'm very passionate when I speak about um, something I can contribute, um, energetic, and I know that in some of my videos uh, it didn't maybe come off this way. So I started making videos three years ago. It was exactly November uh, 2020, the, that COVID year. I took one month off work and I dedicated myself to, to actually doing my NLP Master Practitioner training. I was so pumped up with energy. I was like, yes, let's do it. A lot of really cool ideas came to my mind. I was like, I need to make videos and maybe make a uh, video training. And guess what? The moment I took camera, everything changed. My whole body reacted in a really weird way. I was shaking, I was sweating, I was forgetting words. I, I, I didn't know what it was. I, I actually sat down and I cried. I called my dad and I told him, you know what, I give up, it's not for me, it's for, for younger people, make videos. And uh, yeah, I do give up. And, and he was laughing uh, at me, of course, with his weird sense of humor. He said, oh, maybe it's a little bit too early to give up after one day. You can try a little longer. And clearly I did. So I used my NLP skills to find out what's going on. Why I have this resistance subconsciously in my body to making videos? Turns out that when I was 12 years old, I had this really traumatic experience uh, speaking my truth to a group of students and clearly they didn't like it they threatened me and since then my body imprinted that experience and every time I had to uh, go public with some of my speaking my body would react this way so I started to reprogram my body to change it right to change my response to those triggers see I I made about 40 videos in the last three years uh, even though it was not really easy right it also came uh, with um, a lot of effort uh, on top of that in the last eight years uh, I tried to get pregnant Unfortunately, it did not materialize and uh, I decided to let it go, forgive myself, be very compassionate and just to try uh, to find joy in my life because I, I lost it somehow after being drugged with all kinds of hormones for weeks at a time and uh, spending all my money on trips, fertility trips to Barcelona and also just just like being exhausted all the time and you know my hopes crushed uh, one IVF after another so I decided to find joy and I, I focused on things that I love and one of those things was actually doing psychology events for the internations community that I've been doing for the last three years monthly and some of the videos that you see actually were recorded from those events however I still got some feedback you know Marina you're not very natural you're not as relaxed so I took that feedback seriously I signed up for a stand-up comedy class in Long Beach with five other people and guess what when the time came to present on stage I just couldn't do it I realized small steps first and uh, again with every video I'm trying to to be more relaxed more spontaneous more passionate right but um, again be uh, be patient with me if it does not come very soon very you know very quickly 
what makes me going if my uh, body responds to making videos negatively and um, you know I physically didn't feel well and I'll tell you this I think it's the idea that came to me in 2010 when I realized that the way we teach humans to survive in this uh, in this world uh, is completely wrong and we need to launch this new school new education on how to forgive our parents how to overcome limiting beliefs and just become better humans and some of you if you read the book by Elizabeth Gilbert big magic they, you remember right when she was explaining how uh, she kissed another writer and uh, the idea of a book jumped from her to that other writer so my idea that um, hitchhiked with me 12 years ago uh, is still with me and honestly because it's constantly in the back of my mind it's within me I feel sometimes that I'm betraying it or not doing what it tells me to do right and uh, I'm kind of grateful but a little bit annoyed why me because I don't have all those amazing skills as a performer um, as a visionary I'm not Martin Luther King uh, I do what I can right and we'll see where it leads me even though I did fail my uh, short um, comedian stint um, I did go to the Fringe Festival in Scotland this year uh, it was my first time uh, in five days I watched 12 shows uh, a lot of what they're talking about is based on them being um, heartbroken either from their uh, childhood relationships or from their already adult relationships talking about it um, and playing it uh, in their minds back and forth and trying to find answers and the answer to many of those questions is um, creating boundaries and uh, properly adulting so shifting responsibility from other people from our parents to ourselves right Alexandra George and uh, Laura you know who I'm talking about yes yes it, it applies to you uh, check out the list of shows I attended and I definitely learned something from each of them in their life experiences and um, also a preoccupation with romantic love it was fascinating and at the end they came to um, to the girl who presented and I told her that you know you can you can change it all uh, yeah you will not have an interesting show like this because you won't make those mistakes but you will find love what you're really craving so that's one uh, interesting takeaway from this all right and now uh, on to the main topic of the day one of my uh, biggest highlights from this trip to London and um, in Scotland while in London I went on a walking tour called Marx walking tour you know Karl Marx the uh, author of the capital and he used to live in London and we um, checked out the buildings where he lived uh, tour guide is very uh, knowledgeable and uh, his name is Heiko he, he took us to the museum bar where Karl Marx used to have drinks with his friends and we had a couple of drinks there as well. And then he, he told us that he was going to the speaker's corner. For those of you who don't know, um, it's a place in London, Hyde Park, one of the corners of the park where people can actually exercise free speech. You can talk about anything you want and other people come to listen to you on all kinds of controversial topics since 1872 and very many famous people spoke there including politicians and social activists Heiko said that he was going and I asked to go with him uh, unfortunately it rained so I came the following week on Sunday right and he had his own um, chair or stool he would come and present and his topic was about uh, COVID-19 and how uh, people had to get vaccinated against their will because of the government so feel free to check out this video are all coronavirus but TCM it's it's not does not yeah. consider viruses to be the main cause of infectious disease as long as the disease 
I was more interested in the person speaking next to him who wasn't really as active or as loud. He had a very um, uh, small sign, um, actually it was digital sign that he, he created with his iPad and it said, do not discriminate against adoptive parents. The, the majority of people presenting there, speaking, they were mainly covering religious topics that I was not really interested in. And this was a very unique one. And uh, the problem was this. There were some people listening, but no one really understood what it was about. And he explained, he said, well, you know, uh, adoptive parents have to take classes. And um, uh, sometimes uh, people are afraid that adoptive parents will not give enough love and care to those children because they're not their biological children. So when we asked more questions, he, uh, the guy, I still don't know his name, he said, okay, all adoptive parents have to take classes, okay? But non-adoptive parents don't get prepared for parenthood, right? Uh, or they don't take any classes on parenting. And immediately there were some parents in the crowd who were like, look at my children, they're right here. You know, they're great and they can tell you that they, you know, love me. And the sign was very unclear and ambiguous, okay? I said to the guy, you know, I think that what you're really trying to say, we need to offer or ask for compulsive education to all parents. And of course, immediately there was a person in the crowd who said, lady, no, it's not the sign uh, that's incorrect. It's that you are slow. <laughs> um, you're just not getting the sign. I said, no, 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 I listened for a while. I stood here for a while and it's not just me. Other people are also asking the same question. The sign has to be more clear. And then I explained, I said, you know, I'm a psychologist and I know that children need to forgive their parents because they have some uh, negative memories, they have some resentment. And um, yeah, if all parents were prepared at least uh, for parenting, that would, um, would help in this issue. So guess what? The speaker, and he changed the sign. He changed it to compulsive education to all parents. There was a really interesting discussion. Uh, I did not record it because I was really participating in it. But one guy came to me, his name is Francis. He's from London. He told me that he could not forgive his parents because they followed the requirements on COVID. And they actually stayed away from him. Uh, they listened to the government and isolated themselves during COVID and it ruined his relationship with them. So he, he can't forgive them and um, their relationship is really bad right now and he, he's really, you know, looking for any, any kind of help. Everyone has questions related to their parents, no matter where you go. What do you think? Uh, should parents have a license to practice parenthood? The main discussion is this, while adoptive parents are asked to do some training, take courses to become parents, some biological parents have no idea how to parent, right? And they just, um, they just make kids, um, they, they give birth and um, they hurt their children, intentionally or unintentionally. And uh, if they did get a license, they would be better parents. I want to ask you, should parents have a license to practice parenthood? What do you think? Leave us your comments and I'll see you in my next video.